Okay, you lovely lot. So, it's catch-up time. I've actually been fishing matches and I've been doing qualifying. Can you believe it? So, I'm going to talk you through um, a qualifying match, one of Gaz's matches, the On The Fly TV ones, at Birch House. The final being at Cooper's Lake, where we are today. Um, so, yeah, so we'd had a few, like, little Nicky Nick and New matches down there and... Uh, I'd been getting the feeding a little bit wrong, so obviously having spoken to Jay and he'd told me where I'd gone wrong, I always go blooming wrong, I'd got it right on the day, but to be fair, it'd gone like, it'd gone proper cold, you know, weights were dropping and it'd gone freezing cold, the water had gone gin clear, um, but I, it, drawing wise, you needed to draw in sort of like a, a, a bowl, so pegs, what were we saying, like pegs eight? 10 to 13, 10 to 13, 10 to 13, 10 to 13 with the pegs that you, you ideally wanted to draw to like, well, I suppose it's only like two 12 peg sections to win, but yeah, them are the pegs that you want it to be on to, to win. And I drew peg 12. We've done 12. Well, George, we've done 12. Yeah, I drew peg 12, so like the epicenter. Jay had been on it like the other week and caught like 30 pound in like a two day we'd had on there. Uh, so it'd been fishing really well, but as I said, it had gone like proper cold. Now, Waggler had been working really well. Now, obviously, folks, you know how much I love fishing the Waggler. So I was secretly hoping to join the bowl. But the, the, the main thing, obviously, starting off wise, was always going to be like what Jay's just done a video on, was this, you know, sort of like 30 metre pellet fishing. Little tiny few micros, you know, a 2 milli expander on the York and a little tiny bit of crush. That would be the way forward to start off. But, you know, the Waggler had slowly been getting better and better. It wasn't really coming into play on the matches that I've been fishing before it, just because... The pole was so dominant, um, you know, the skimmer was having a little bit of a chew and the waggler was just too slow. You get odd fish on it and it was noticeable that it'd be like bigger perch or big roach or... I'm not, no, you didn't get, you didn't get the odd big skimmer. But anyway, yeah, so we, we come to it. Um, started off on a long pole at sort of like 13 metres and I've had, I've had a nice little run. I've had like seven or eight skimmers, you know, sort of like three to the pound fish in the first, I'm going to say like 15, 20 minutes and it was amazing, like no one else was getting a bite so I'm like, oh get ready, here we go, we're getting straight through and then it just went dead, literally couldn't get a bite we've had Callum Dick sort of like opposite me slightly over the way Richard himself right smack bang opposite me and yeah, it was, uh, Brad is, Brad Parks as well he was sort of like slightly opposite me to, to the right so and no one was really getting bites at all so I didn't want to commit myself too early on that waggler. What, what I'd been doing after an hour, after it had gone completely down on the pole line, I was just literally pinging out sort of two and three magwise all over the place. Some were like hitting rich on the head, I was pinging them that hard. You know what I mean? They were going all over the place. But then I've set up the waggler. I used to fish for, for roach pretty much back in the day, um, back on the likes of uh, Bradshaws and Blundells for the hide and the roach. It was only like small fish fishing, but it's like really fine main lines. That was the main ones. I've only fished like 0.14 main line, and I fished a really light 0 10 up length. Now, normally, waggler fishing, you don't really want to be going any less than like a 0.12 just because of the, you know, when you're striking, um, it's just a little bit too harsh for your rig. You know, we tend to get like crack offs basically, cheeky. So, fish dead light, and it allows you to fish dead light if you're using the right rods. I've used a like a superb rod in the other day. Um, so I've set my flow just over depth, it probably had about six foot and I put four number 11s down the line, um, you know, really slow fall, nice long 10 inch up length on, I've had, what have I had on, I've had, I've had an 18s F1 maggot on, so quite quite a big hook but they're, they're not heavy, they're like a really fine wire, I love the Guru F1 maggot hooks, they're, they're superb and I've just side up to maggot, so as I said, pinging out two or three maggots, chuck waggler over it after an hour and a half, uh, and I've had a bite straight away on the drop, little, little babby road, and then I've missed, I'm going to say I've missed like six or seven, one after another, and everything through the water. So little little babby road, it's little babby road, but then I've missed loads. Uh, and then I've hooked something decent, turned out to be a blooming carp, but then I've had a perch, I've had a perch a pound on it, and like when no one else is catching anything, you can see how rock hard it was. You just knew we were on the right method, so... The main thing about that day was resting the lines though, so you'd have a run, like as soon as you go on summit, or certainly the waggler anyway, you catch like two or three dead quick fish, one of them would be sort of like a nice bonus perch, like six ounce to ten ounce, and then you'd get like maybe two or three roaches, and then you start missing bites again. The other thing as well that was so important on all the lines, but as well as the waggler, was not leaving it. You literally would not get a bite if that float was settled. So you'd cast in, feather it, it was flat calm so I didn't have to sink the line and then literally you'd leave it in for a minute then if you'd not had anything you'd wind back and just cast it in again. 
and you know you, you were you were looking to sort of frustrate the fish more than anything you know rather than just sitting there nice tidy waiting for a bite it definitely wasn't right on the day uh, so yeah so i've had a, a few more perch and then you know halfway through the match people start packing up and you're like oh here we go and i literally couldn't see anyone else catching i think i've hooked another carp that fell off but obviously they don't count anyway short pole i've had a couple of fish on the short pole i think i've had one decent perch and then like two or three roach but again that wasn't working but what i'd be doing i'd i'd fish the waggler for like 20 minutes come back on the short pole might sneak one but i knew that every time i go back on that waggler i'd have something decent like a decent roach or usually a perch uh, and then two or three little babby rudd or, or roach and then i'd have to rest it 20 minutes on a pole so i just spent the, the rest of the match like that and yeah i've ended up winning i've only had seven pounds i want to say seven six something like that seven eight but when three pound eight second, you know what I mean? So it's quite quite a way ahead and I'm convinced, well, I know it's because the, I've fished the waggler. Um, so obviously, rather than sort of like, not being stuck in your ways, but you know, not being able to adapt and, you know, use different methods, that was definitely key for winning on that day. Uh, so yeah, so we're through to the final in February on uh, Cooper's Lake, as I say, where we are today. And I, I proper can't wait for the final. He's having a go on my box at the minute and he's catching a few fish so I can't wait to get uh, get on it and, and have a do and hopefully we'll work some out and win lots and lots of tokens. Yeah!